This is video number one, and we're going to begin with the introduction and the quick overview. So are you ready to understand how to make your rankings stick and understand the fundamentals that don't necessarily change? Now, before we do that, I want to talk about mindset because I'm a big believer that if you're in the right mindset before you implement this process, then your likelihood of speeding up the process and doing it successfully is higher. Now, a lot of marketing strategies come and go. The ones that are often the ones that stay and stick are boring and overlooked, and that's why they are overlooked. So just keep that in mind that as long as you're willing to do what is boring and cons constantly think about how to make your users experience a good one, everything else is going to follow. So now what I want to do is give you a quick overview of the video course itself so you know exactly what to expect. And that way, when you implement the process, it'll just make more sense. This is video number one. Video number two, we're going to talk about the intent of a keyword. Now, the reason why we want to do this before we get the keywords is because a lot of people, generally speaking, they'll type it in a keyword tool, they'll get a bunch of keywords, and then they'll just begin to try to rank on them. That is a big mistake. And the reason being is because if you don't know why somebody typed in a keyword, where they are in the process of buying, whether they're researching, whether they're comparing, whether they really don't know what they're buying, or if they do know what they're buying, it's going to be a lot easier to convince them. So knowing the intent of a keyword is crucial. Third, we're going to talk about getting keywords and understanding LSI. And I'll talk more about that acronym in that particular video. But at this point in time, we're going to get keywords and we are going to be using a free tool. Video number four, we're going to talk about on-page optimization basics. Unfortunately, a lot of people miss out on optimization in terms of their website itself, such as how do you make your website search engine friendly so that when the search engine comes to your website, they know exactly what you are talking about. And video number five, we're going to talk about WordPress on page optimization. So from video four, I talk about the fundamentals video number five, we are going to do some implementation. So you learn it and then we are going to implement it. All right. Video number six, we're going to talk about creating LSI content so that Google knows what your content is all about. And therefore it's more likely going to rank you higher as long as you're not spammy. So, what we're trying to do is we're trying to appease primarily the human being that is reading the content, but in doing so you will please the search engines as well. We're not talking about black hat tactics here or gaming the system or anything like that. We're talking about long-term strategies. So video number seven, we're going to talk about on page consistency with WordPress plugins. And I'm going to talk about some plugins that we have tested and we have found that work well with our results. Some plugins have come and gone. There's a particular one that I have found that has really, really done well across the board. And then I'm going to throw in a bonus in video number eight, and we're going to talk about high authority backlinks, where to go to get them, why high authority backlinks are more important than just a bunch of backlinks. So you see back in the day, you could throw a hundred backlinks at a site and get it ranked and not so much nowadays, but this is more of a long-term strategy and this works now and most likely will work in the end, as long as you do not do it in a black hat manner. So that's that. And the next thing I want to do is talk about things you need to get started. Now, obviously you're not going to need to have any tools because everything else is free aside from the domain and everything like that. But with the domain, the web hosting that does cost money aside from that, WordPress is free aside from that, all the tools that we're going to be using is free too. But before you can actually figure out the intent of a keyword, 
you really need to figure out what are you selling? Are you selling your own product? Are you selling somebody else's product? What are you selling? Is it a service? Is it a product? What is it? And number two, who are you selling to? I really want you to begin to paint a picture of who that might be because you don't really want to necessarily please everybody. You want to please the person who is what we call a buyer who really, really wants that product. All right. So who are you selling to? What do they look like? All of that. If you can figure all that, just a general point of view from their perspective, we can then move on to video number two. Welcome back. This is video number two, and we are going to talk about the intent of a keyword. So before you go out and you grab a bunch of keywords, stop and wait. And the reason being is because the biggest mistake that people make is in this process is not really knowing where your buyer is within the buyer's cycle. So really what you want it to do is when you look at a keyword, you want to think, why is somebody typing in this keyword? Are they researching? Are they comparison shopping or are they buying? So that's really what it comes down to. Are they looking around? Do they really know what they're buying? Maybe they don't know what they're buying yet. And you got to get them to the point of researching, comparing, and then buying, right? If you think about the buyer cycle, if somebody doesn't really know what they're looking for, they might type in the keyword, how to stop blank. If they're researching, they might do brand name versus brand name. Or if they're actually looking to buy the product, then they might type in your product name or the product model number. You might see some keywords out there where somebody is searching for a specific model number. Let's say for example, for an appliance or they're looking for parts. And the reason they're doing that is because if they're searching very, very specifically, they're more likely going to buy, right? So if you can think about that, then when you get them to your website and you get them to your articles, your content, your videos and everything like that, then guess what? You've set yourself up for success. So in other words, different keywords can mean different things and not understanding where your buyer is within that process can set you up for failure. Now this can change depending on which article they land on, like I said earlier. So creating your content, based on the intent of the keyword is crucial. So I really want you to kind of think about that before you go out and begin to really start digging up keywords and doing keyword research, using keyword tools or anything like that. It doesn't matter if you're using a paid keyword tool or a free keyword tool, same thing. Understanding the intent of your direction, is crucial. So if your site mainly is trying to sell stuff right off the bat and you might want to target mainly buyer keywords or keywords where people are comparison shopping you versus your competitor. And then of course you can go from that point and then drill deep deeper and dig on keywords that are related to somebody who is not necessarily knowing what they're looking for. So now that we have gotten that out of the way, now you understand that now that you're thinking about it, you're more likely to succeed and you're more likely to be able to create content that will convert. Now let's talk about the fundamentals and move on to video number three. Welcome back. This is video number three. And now that you understand the buyer keyword intent, it's time to go ahead and get some keywords and we'll talk about understanding LSI as well so that when you begin to look for keywords, you can look for similar keywords, which is basically what LSI is all about. So LSI stands for latent semantic indexing. It's just another fancy name of similar keywords. So what I want to do before we go out and search for keywords is to give you some examples of LSI. So as you know, Google sends out a robot or a computer that tries to read and understand 
what is on your page. So if you understand this concept and you can help Google out, then most likely it'll categorize you in the right area. So for example, Google has a way of, to know if the keywords you're using actually relate to each other. So they can see if one keyword is relational to another keyword, or if you're keyword spamming, or you're trying to game the system. So that's why if you really look through this, you realize that it really comes down to not just using the right keywords, but really appealing to a human being. If you appeal to the human being, then you will appeal to Google in the long term because essentially what you're doing is you're providing quality, right? So what you're trying to do is you're trying to help Google paint a picture of what you're talking about. And that's what their robot is designed to do. So let's, let's just take an example here. Everybody has, you know, lives in an apartment or house or somewhere. So let's talk about roofs. Imagine writing an article about roof repair. So if you use the word, say for example, shingle, nails, a specific type of shingle, maybe a metal shingle, uh, we could talk about gutters. Google knows at that point that the word shingle, the word nail, and the word roof and the repair, Google knows that you're talking about roof repair because they have a massive dictionary words that have, they're able to see the relationships between each word. So in that case, Google knows what you're talking about. And if you're talking about, if you just try to keyword spam it like roof repair, roof repair, roof repair, Google's going to know that as well. And they're going to know that you're trying to gain the system. And that's really not going to be appealing as much to a real live human being. Another thing that we're not really going to go into too much about, but if you can get a human being to stay on your website for a long period of time, and in other words, engage with your content, then you're going to get a higher ranking with Google. So what we call that being a higher stick rate, a higher engagement rate can actually help you out as well. So actually you'll see nowadays that the longer your content, the better, or if you create a video, videos actually create a higher stick rate and higher engagement rate as well. So with that said, now let's go ahead and find some keywords. So going back to video number two, if you really think about the intent of the keyword in relation to the content on your website, at this point in time, I generally speaking will use two websites. Now, number one, if I try to figure out, okay, the buyer is in the researching phase or in the comparison phase, or maybe they don't even really know what they're looking for, Google is a great resource to start with. And then as far as the buyer, actual marketplaces are really good places to find buyer keywords. So for example, Amazon would be a good place to go. Now you'll realize in just a minute that I'm not really using any keyword tool. What I'm using is what we call the suggested keywords. Now, in order for the suggested keywords to show up in Google or Amazon, that means that there must be a high volume of people searching for it. So if you go to Google, for example, you know how you type in a keyword, let's say, for example, how to repair a roof. And when you do that, you can see that Google gives you a list of suggestions. So we can see how to repair a roof leak, leak around events, or roof truss. Now we know off the bat that these are highly searched. Now, if there are any relation to your business, then these are great words to use. Now let's say, for example, how to repair a roof leak. At this point in time, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll also see other related searches. So how to repair a roof leak yourself from the inside around a vent on a mobile home, how to repair a roof leak on a camper from the inside, the costs, 
and flat roof leak repair. So if you're finding that, okay, this one actually relates to my product or service and you click on it, you can jot those keywords down, do the same thing. You can take a look at these keywords and these are showing the suggested keyword that you want. So what you can do is you can simply highlight these like so, and simply copy these the text and paste that into your notepad. Now there are tons and tons and tons of other keywords, but these are great keywords to start out with. Now, generally speaking, what I like to do is I like to use these as article titles. Now, if you dig a lot deeper and you look at particular articles that are surrounding these particular titles, or if you take these long tail keywords or long phrase keywords and you put them into your favorite keyword tool, whether that be Google Planner or another keyword tool, that keyword tool will generally speaking, will give you a larger list of keywords that are related. And those are what we call LSI keywords or latent semantic keywords or keywords that are actually related to the direct main keyword. So again, if I'm doing any type of keyword researching and I'm looking for somebody who is researching or they're comparison shopping, I'll type that in here. I'll look at these. I'll pick and choose from these, create these as titles, and then I'll plug these into something like Google Keyword Planner. And then I'll get a list of detailed keywords and use those lists of keywords. You don't have to use all of them, but use some of them inside of your article content, whether that be your written content or your video content. Now, a really, really great way to get rankings is using the same method that I showed you here, title, and then a list of keywords from Google Keyword Planner or your favorite keyword tool, and then write the article and then make a video about it and then upload it to YouTube but in addition to that, upload the transcript or get somebody to transcribe it and upload it as well. And then that way YouTube knows that your video has latent semantic indexing keywords inside of it or related keywords inside of it. And that will actually boost your ranking as well. So that's what I do when I try to find keywords for the basic researching and comparison. Now I like to use Amazon when it comes to products that we actually want to sell. Now, obviously Amazon does not have all of the products and services. You can use something like eBay. And if you don't find anything, you can also use Google as well. But as you know, if you go to Amazon, let's type something in here like roof repair and right off the bat, Amazon begins to suggest RV roof repair, roof repair tape, sealant, camper roof repair, and roof repair spray. Now, remember, we actually saw the camper roof repair in Google as well. So if we take a look at here, this gives us some ideas about what, what keywords people are using. You can even look at the ratings, the negatives and the positives and see what kind of language people who buy this actually use so that you can use those same terminology and language to speak to them. Because otherwise, if you don't speak their language, they'll feel like, wait a minute, you're not really, you know, maybe are you legitimate? So you really want to make sure that you speak their language, speak to them and their needs. And what better way to do that than using amazon.com or paid marketplaces.